So if you want to learn a language, one of the reasons to learn a language, I believe, should be a natural passion for the language, and not just the language itself, but everything surrounding the language. This includes the people, the culture, the country, the cities. Then also you have the literature, the fashion, the music, and the passions and the customs of the people. If you think you can, or if you think you can't, you're absolutely right. Similarly, if you think you can learn a language, or if you think you can't learn a language, you're absolutely right. The first step for succeeding in anything is assuming you can do it. This goes for language learning and this goes for anything else you want to achieve as well. What else are you preventing yourself from achieving without even trying by saying it's hard up front? In this video, we're going to explore language learning from the perspective of a polyglot, me. Hi, my name is Mo Salami and I help experts, entrepreneurs, coaches and consultants grow and scale their online business whilst creating their ideal lifestyle. For the best tips for online business, entrepreneurship, financial freedom and mindset, subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell to be notified every time I post a new video. I speak fluent English, French, Spanish and Brazilian Portuguese. When I first wanted to learn a foreign language, I had zero doubt that I'll be able to learn a language and it didn't even occur to me or cross my mind that it wasn't possible. So at the moment, like I said, I speak four languages and I know that if I wanted to learn more, I could because language learning is easy. So why did I do that? Why did I say language learning is easy in that way? Because again, if you think you can, and if you think you can't, it's absolutely true. Some people think language learning is so difficult, so they don't even attempt to learn a language. And some people are so desperate to learn a language. Maybe they want it because they want to move to another country, or maybe their significant other speaks another first language and they want to communicate with the family of their significant other. Or maybe they want to improve their job prospects by learning a language. There are so many different reasons that some people want to learn a language. And frankly, there are so many reasons people are desperate to learn a language. But a lot of times, because they think language learning is impossible, they immediately take themselves out of the game and don't even make the attempt. So like I said, I speak English, French, Spanish, and Brazilian Portuguese fluently. My mother tongue is English and French was the first foreign language that I learned. And then after that, Spanish, and then after that, Portuguese. When I first decided to learn French, I just thought, I wonder what it would be like to speak a second European language after English and which one should I go for? And French seemed like as good a language to go for as any. So you probably noticed a common theme in the languages that I chose to learn. French, Spanish, Portuguese, they're all in the same group, a group of languages called the Romance languages. So many years ago, the Roman Empire spoke Latin. You had two types of Latin. You had the refined Latin spoken by higher society. And then you had the vulgar Latin spoken by the common people. So vulgar Latin, which was spoken by the common people, soon spread throughout the empire. And these evolved into the languages that we know today, such as French and Spanish and Portuguese, and also languages such as Romanian and Catalan and Italian, and there are so many others as well. And all of these are in that umbrella of languages called the Romance languages. So out of all these Romance languages, the closest of the Romance languages to the original Latin is actually Italian. And the furthest from the original Latin that we have today is actually French. So the term Romance language comes from the fact that the languages evolved from Latin, which was the language spoken by the Roman Empire. So why else did I decide to learn these languages? I think another reason is reach. If you look at these languages, Spanish and French and Portuguese and English as well, including that, these are languages that have a really amazing reach around the world. A huge number of people can speak English or French or Spanish or Portuguese around the world. So it has a really, really great reach. Again, English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, these are some of the most spoken languages around the world. And I know that if I'm speaking any of these languages, I have such a great connection with people around the world. Again, there are multiple countries that speak at least one of these languages as the first language of that country. So by speaking these languages, the reach and the connectivity that I have around the world is incredible. So most days I'm either speaking English or French or Spanish or Portuguese or a combination of these languages. And in a world of 8 billion people, 1 billion people speak one of these languages as their first language. 
French was the first foreign language that I picked to learn. And French was more like reach on reflection. My reason to pick French was purely for enjoyment. And then it just so happens that a lot of people around the world speak French. And when you learn French and you become fluent in French, it feels like a natural next step to then learn Spanish. Learning Spanish was phenomenal. It was very fun to learn Spanish as it was learning French as well. These are two very enjoyable languages. So I could speak English, I could speak French, I could speak Spanish. The choice that I gave myself next was, do I learn Italian or do I learn Portuguese? And in the end, I decided to learn Brazilian Portuguese. And again, why Portuguese? What was the scientific reason behind choosing to learn Brazilian Portuguese? Very simple. It was just another language that I enjoyed the process of learning. And it's always interesting because when you mention Spanish and when you mention Portuguese, the first thing a lot of people say is, wow, those languages are so similar. Yes, they're pretty similar. However, lots of native Spanish speakers are not able to fully understand Portuguese and lots of native Portuguese speakers aren't able to understand Spanish. I did read somewhere that a native Spanish speaker understands Portuguese better than a native Portuguese speaker understands Spanish. So my Spanish native speakers and my Portuguese native speakers watching this video, leave a comment below to, to correct me on that. So English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, I picked all these languages from a perspective of enjoyment and I really enjoyed the process of learning each of these languages. By speaking these languages, I can connect with a huge number of people. I can actually connect with a billion people around the world. Another way of saying it is I can hold a conversation with one person in every eight in the whole world in their native tongue. And of course, their native tongue is either English or French or Spanish or Portuguese. Connection with languages is so important. And I always say that if I speak to you in your mother tongue, I'm speaking to your heart. But if I speak to you in a language that's not your first language and you're not confident in that language, then I'm speaking to your head. Let me explain. So for example, if it's your native first language, you know, your mother tongue, it's normal and it's natural and you don't think about it, you just speak. When people speak their first language, they do not think about grammar or am I speaking it right or which sentence order am I doing? They just speak and they literally just speak from the heart. So if you're speaking to someone in their native tongue and you're speaking their native tongue, you're literally having a heart to heart conversation because there isn't too much thinking behind it. They're just speaking naturally. If you're speaking to someone in a language that's not their native language, you're speaking to their head because as they're speaking, they're usually thinking, am I saying this right? Am I constructing the sentence right? Does that person understand me? And oftentimes they're nervous to speak. So a lot of times they are in their heads so much as they're speaking that language. So when you're having that conversation with someone who's not a native of that language, you're speaking to their head because that's where their mind is at. They're really thinking of speaking the language instead of just speaking the language naturally. You know, they're so focused on, am I speaking the language correctly? So a lot of times if I hear an accent, I will switch to the person's native language because it's an easier conversation for them. And again, it's not an exact science. If anything, it's art, but there's always that option to switch languages if required. So those were the reasons I picked those languages, reach, enjoyment, and connecting with the maximum people. So what makes language learning hard? Like I mentioned at the top, if you think you can, and if you think you can't, you're absolutely right either way. If you think language learning is hard, it will be hard. If you think language learning is easy, it will also be easy. One of the actual things that could make language learning hard is inconsistency. To be good at anything, you have to really put in the work, really put in the practice, of learning and that includes languages as well so in order to learn a language you really have to put in the practice and the regular practice often to to succeed inconsistency makes the whole process a lot harder and to explain inconsistency i'll flip it and talk about consistency being consistent with language learning means showing up every single time showing up could mean every single week or it could mean multiple times a week consistency just means setting a schedule into the future for what you want to achieve and showing up every single time. So you have to have that consistency to thrive. And again, if you upfront think language learning is hard, it's going to be harder for you to step into wanting to be consistent because you're going into something and being consistent in something that you believe to be impossible. Consistency requires you to show up every single time. That practice is so important in order for you to flourish. 
The next thing that could make language learning hard is having the wrong mindset. There's that diagram that says your thoughts around a topic lead to your feelings around a topic, leads to your actions around the topic, and ultimately that leads to your results. So think about it. If up front you think language learning is hard, your thoughts around language learning won't lead you to have a good feeling. Not having a good feeling won't lead you to take in great actions that will lead to the results that you need. So it starts with the mindset, you know, have that mindset, having that mindset that language learning is easy or language learning is possible or language learning is achievable. You see the difference, having that mindset means that you have a different feeling when you hear the word language. You have a different feeling where you have to step up or show up to learn that language. And because you have that different feeling, you're showing up differently. Because you're showing up differently, you're taking different actions. And those actions will lead you closer and closer to that result that you want. And ultimately, that result you want could be to speak a few words. That result you want could be fluency. That result you want could be mastery. Whatever the result that you want, your thoughts about the result dictate your result that you get eventually. And of course, this goes for language learning and this goes for pretty much any result that you want. I hope you're able to appreciate the use of languages in this video as a metaphor for other things that you want to achieve as well. The mindset piece leads to you having empowering beliefs around languages or disempowering beliefs around languages. So for example, if you have a positive mindset around language learning, empowering beliefs could be, well, that person over there learned a language, so can I. If you have a disempowering belief around the topic of languages, your thought process could be, language learning is impossible. And the disempowering beliefs that tend to be out there tend to be, I don't have the time, or I'm too old, or I just don't live there. If only I lived in that country or in that city or around that language, it's possible. You know, there are so many different disempowering beliefs that you could have. And at the same time that you have those disempowering beliefs, you can switch them out because it's your choice to have empowering beliefs. The capacity of a human being is unlimited. So if that person over there can do it, that means that you can do it as well. That goes for languages and that goes for pretty much anything that you want to achieve. Language learning is similar to most things in that if you want to get a great result, you have to put in the effort. And I get it. There are so many quick fix solutions that seem to be out there. Learn a language in seven days or learn a language from zero to fluency in three months. And having said that, it is possible if you have the right immersion to get really far with a language in three months or in six months. All of that is a possibility. What I would say is that if you put in your mind that you're going to put some effort in up front to get the result that you want, in this case languages, then all of a sudden the effort is just part of the process. And by the way, if you put in an effort, it doesn't have to be a chore. You know, putting in effort doesn't have to mean you detest every single moment of the journey. Putting in effort could mean, by the way, I'm going to put in the work, I'm going to put in the hours, I'm going to show up but I'm going to set this up in a way that is so enjoyable for me. To go from language learning is hard to I'm doing the process of language learning. It really is important to have that mindset that you're going to put in the effort and over a prolonged period of time as well. I want you to think for a second about an amazing result that you achieved in your life. And if you say, I can't think of an amazing result, then I would say to you, I know you can't think of an amazing result, but if you could think of an amazing result, <laughs> What's an amazing result that you've achieved in your life? And when you think about the amazing result that you achieve, you had to put in some effort to achieve that. And the chances are, perhaps you were good at it. So it didn't even seem like effort. You know, the time just went by, but look at any, look at any amazing result, any amazing achievement you achieved. And the chances are very, very high, you know, 99.99% there that you had to put in some really great effort to achieve that result. So to take language learning from hard to easy, take the passion that you have for the other result that you got and transfer that passion into a passion for language learning. And then all of a sudden it graduates from hard to easy. So I've been giving you my perspective of language learning from the perspective of a polyglot. Like I mentioned, I speak fluent English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. What is your perspective? Do you agree with me that language learning is easy? Or do you think language learning is not so easy? What's the language that you've learned? Or what's the language you'd love to learn? Leave your comments below and I look forward to reading them. So what makes language learning easy? One thing that makes language learning easy is having a passion for the language that you wish to speak. 
if I'm speaking French or if I'm speaking Spanish or if I'm speaking Portuguese, I genuinely enjoy speaking these languages. There are multiple different aspects of each language that I really and truly enjoy. And it feels like a pleasure, it feels like an honor just to speak those languages, you know, speaking them, delving into that world where I'm opening the portal and joining that world of that particular language is something that I really enjoy. So if you want to learn a language, one of the reasons to learn a language, I believe, should be a natural passion for the language. And not just the language itself, but everything surrounding the language. This includes the people, the culture, the country, the cities. Then also you have the literature, the fashion, the music, and the passions and the customs of the people. The whole spectrum that surrounds the language, not just the language itself, brings you to this really great place, metaphorically and actually. So having that passion for the language that you want to learn, it lights up a flame inside of you. And that flame, it sort of lights the way for you to learn the language and get the result that you want. And all of a sudden, language learning becomes easy. Another way to make language learning easy is via immersion. I've never lived in a French speaking country. I've never lived in a Spanish speaking country. I've never lived in a Portuguese speaking country. However, I do speak English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese as well. So an ideal scenario is pick the language you want to learn and go live in the country that speaks that language. Et voila, it's much easier for you because you're surrounded by the language. It's all around you and you pick it up a lot quicker. You're immersed. So the way I did immersion was having the languages around me. So how would I do this? I'd do this via using subtitles often. So if I'm watching a movie, I tend to use subtitles or I would watch the movie in that native language. Another way is at times I would book tuition with language tutors. Another way is texting friends in that language or speaking to friends specifically who speak that language. So finding a way to integrate the language into what you do day by day. And what it means to you is that you don't have to literally, you know, every Wednesday you're sat for an hour because it's language tuition day. You don't have to necessarily learn in that way. What it means is that you're learning when you're not learning because you've immersed the language into various aspects of your life that are important to you and that you would do anyway. Ultimately, this means that you're learning when you're not learning and that steady progress all of a sudden becomes rapid progress in the direction of the goal that you've set for the language. You have to enjoy yourself. You know, I think enjoyment is the sibling of passion. And if you're going to learn a language, making sure that you enjoy yourself on that journey is so important. So the question becomes, how can I input enjoyment into my language learning? If that's the question, you're pretty much the only one that has the answer. What is it you love to do? Do you love to go out to eat? Maybe you can go to restaurants that have that language, you know, maybe they have the menu in that language. Do you love to travel? Maybe you can travel to the countries that have that language. Do you love some of the cultural aspects of the language? It could be things like a salsa if you're speaking about Spanish or a soca if you're speaking about Brazilian, Portuguese, for example. What are the activities that you could do based around that language? Do you love watching movies? Maybe you could watch movies in that target language or use subtitles in that target language whilst listening to the movie in your own first language. What is it that you find enjoyable and how can you input that into your language learning? How can you add passion to your language learning? How can you immerse yourself in a language? How can you make it fun? If you do these three things, I think that you will believe, just like I do, that language learning is easy. So these three pieces, I think, really make language learning easy. But what is fluency? What does someone mean when they say, become fluent in a language? I'll give you my definition of fluency. It's not a dictionary definition. It's the definition that I would give based on what I've seen speaking across the spectrum of a few different languages. Fluency to me means that you can hold a conversation in that target language, and you're able to hold that conversation either with a native speaker or a non-native speaker. And what fluency doesn't mean to me is perfection. It doesn't mean that you won't have grammatical slips every now and again. It doesn't mean that you won't have to swap out a word every now and again. It doesn't mean that you will be perfect in every single sentence construction that you do. It just means that you're comfortably able to hold your own in that target language. You're more or less comfortable to switch and speak that language if you travel to that language or if you're speaking to someone else who speaks that language. As with most things in life, there's levels to this. So of course, there's a difference if you know the top 1,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 common words and phrases. If you think about your own native tongue and you listen to this, I'm presuming there's a high chance that your first language might be English. So if you think about the language that you speak naturally, 
there's always another level. I'm sure there are always brand new words and phrases and ways to use your own existing language. And this is the same with learning a foreign language. There's levels to this. Even if you've achieved fluency in a language, it's such a great idea to be open to learning more in that language because there's always another level. For example, with the Spanish language, Spanish is spoken in 27 different regions around the world. And correct me if I'm wrong in the comments if it's more than that, but it's spoken in at least 27 different countries around the world. And of course, they'll have their different accents and local slang that they would use, for example. So it's always a continued learning process with any language. So fluency should be that baseline, I think, if you're aiming to be very great and interact with a lot of people. And then the next level is just being open and being studious. It's just being open to be taught and to learn more because it just deepens your knowledge of the language and it deepens how well you can communicate and connect with other people using that language. The actual number of words that you need to know to be fluent in a language aren't relatively that many. You know, it's, it's very important to know the core words that people use in a day-to-day -day conversation. And then, like I said, there's other levels that you can go to by expanding your depth of knowledge and depth of practice of that particular language. So once you know the common structure of a language, the main sentences, the main phrases, and you can converse with people pretty, pretty well, you're pretty much fluent. Fluency to me means conversation without hesitation and really being able to make that connection in your target language. So there's a level between fluency and speaking like a native. Now we're talking about gravitating towards mastery. And to me, fluency assumes that yes, you have that baseline to speak in a language and you're committed to always improving. And then that's how you gravitate towards mastery if that's something that you want to do. Again, if you think about your first language that you speak, there's always that next level for improvement. So can you imagine you're speaking as a native and you can still improve your language, let alone if you're fluent, looking to become a native. So I guess the main message here is enjoy the fact you're speaking this other language versus focusing on the errors and the imperfection when you speak any other language. But let's face it, there are languages that are traditionally thought of as being hard. If you Google right now, what is a hard language? I'm sure you'll get a long list of languages and the articles are stating that this language is hard and that language is hard and they give the reasons. So I'm going to address this next, why those hard languages are also easy. So there are languages that are thought to be harder and there are languages that take longer to learn depending on how far they are from your native language. And I think once more, if you have a passion for the language, any language, all of a sudden it makes the language easier to learn, including languages that are traditionally thought to be harder. Again, we put the label of harder on languages that may take longer to learn or languages that are far away from our native language. If you're passionate about and insert the name of a hard language, if you're passionate about this language, do you think it will be harder for you to learn? or easier for you to learn. Think about something you're passionate about right now. Maybe you're passionate about playing an instrument or maybe you're passionate about some kind of sport or maybe you're passionate about music or passionate about your career. Maybe you're passionate about entrepreneurship. There are so many things that people are passionate about and it depends on the person, right? If you're truly passionate about a topic, all of a sudden it gets that much less harder to achieve. There's no such thing as a hard language if you have enough passion for the language itself. And again, it circles back to belief. Once you have the passion for the language, once you're ready to immerse yourself in a language and enjoy yourself in a language, all of a sudden you can learn the language, even though you know it might take longer or present more of a challenge because the structure of the language is away from the structure of your native language. If you speak English and you want to learn Spanish, it might be a different proposition to if you speak English and you want to learn a non-Romance or a non-Germanic language. If it takes longer, doesn't mean it's necessarily harder. What it does mean is you get more time to enjoy that journey in the direction of fluency or in the direction of the result that you want from that language. If you're able to develop a passion for something you want to learn, all of a sudden it becomes easy because your thought process say, I'm about to do something really fun. And if the journey to get to the result is a shorter journey or a longer journey, it doesn't matter because you're enjoying yourself along the journey. You're doing something you're passionate about and you get to spend even more time in that journey. The work seems like play. And the more and more you play, the closer and closer you'll get into the result you seek. So again, it's important to have that passion for the result that you want and also enjoy the journey to get that result as well.
what was hard yesterday is easy today and this goes for languages or anything else that you want to achieve so take some of the pieces from this video on language learning and apply it to another goal that you want to achieve this could be the passion or the emotion or enjoying the process and making it fun add that to a goal that you want to achieve and this will stand you in good stead anything is easy if you have a passion for it and with that passion work becomes play for the best tips for online business entrepreneurship financial freedom and mindset subscribe to my channel hit the bell to be notified every time i post a new video if you like this video then hit the like button it helps the video rank higher for the youtube algorithm that way it's easier for people like yourself to find videos like this one and get value from it also i've left a link in the description to a couple of other videos that i think you'll enjoy especially if you've enjoyed this video i help people design their ideal lifestyle for your impact and fulfillment impact via having their own online business and fulfillment via personal development coaching if that sounds like something you'd be interested in then schedule a call go to mosalami.com forward slash free call or go to the link in the description to schedule a call hope you've enjoyed this video and i'll see you on the next one and until then do the best you can consistently. Ciao.